uh, can Karunanandi come in and counter what you're saying and then very calmly, very gently and very keen on listening to you, Mr. Malviya, we'll come back to you just in a moment. Karuna. Karuna, I think you've turned yourself on mute again. Uh, it's not me, it's your... Okay, it's your, you're fine uh, now, you're fine now, go on. Mr. Malviya, I'll be as gentle as possible because I can tell that your government is sensitive to good people. Um, let's be clear. What does the law say? The law says that the dying declaration of a victim of rape can be sufficient to convict the rapist. So it's not that there is there are lots of pieces of evidence and this is the uh, you know and the autopsy report is the main evidence. It's not under law. The way it works is that let us be clear that after someone is raped, if they have a shower, if they if even one day is spent in a you know acting in a normal way, then there's highly, highly likely that there will be no evidence of semen. So the point is that the evidence of semen is neither here nor there. However, the evidence of the victim, whether it's in a dying declaration or whether it's in a one sixty four statement that is taken forward and then she is consistent during trial, is sufficient to convict the accused. What interests me is in particular is the fact that you seem to be going to bat for the accused. And that is something that is quite curious to you. Because what you are doing is that you are doing it, you are going to bat for the accused completely contrary to law. You are here not as Anas Malviya, you are here as the BJP. You are here as a spokesperson of the government which is responsible for the prosecution of this uh, gang base. And you are also here as the representative of the central government which has possibly that support of the journalists hugely invading the right of the media, which is at a heightened level from the right, the, the speech right of a regular person, right? There are particular processes that you have to go through. You basically have to, what, what is the process? That the Home Ministry has to go to a review committee, and then that review committee has okay, to... Can I play out that dying process. declaration, please, so that uh, Mr. Malvi and everybody else can hear it? And the significance of the dying declaration, Supreme Court... Uh, laws have very clearly, Supreme Court orders have made very clear that a dying declaration can be taken as evidence and under the Nirbhaya laws and under the current rape laws of this country, and Karuna Nandi can correct me if I am wrong, between what anybody else, the accused, the accused family is saying and the victim says, you believe the victim till the time an investigation proves that to be right or wrong and we wait with a completely open mind on what that investigation will unearth. Meanwhile, listen to that victim's dying declaration. तो रवि कह रहा था कुछ हुआ कि नहीं हाँ अच्छा ये दोनों मिले हुए हैं तो उस समय तो बच गए आप फिर उस दिन जिस दिन आपकी चोट लगी है उस दिन रेप हुआ है अच्छा दोनों दोनों ने किया था कोई और भी था अच्छा बाकी सब भाग गए थे जब मम्मी को देख के भाग गए थे तो आप उस समय होश में थे थोड़ा सा होश था अच्छा अच्छा तो रेप हुआ आपके साथ उसके बाद क्या किया नॉट हियर द विक्टिम अलेजिंग ऑन टेप दैट शी वॉज रेप एंड यू गॉट द माइट ऑफ द उत्तर प्रदेश स्टैब्लिशमेंट आउट टू प्रूव दिस इज नॉट रेप Now I leave it to the conscience of every single person who's watching this broadcast Rahul, at this time to decide to what this. they think of this. And I want to quote to you Kushal Rao versus the state of Bombay. And Mr. Malviya, you'll come in on this, on the evidentiary value of a dying declaration. Dying declaration stands on its own footing, cannot be contradicted by reference to extraneous evidence of uh, the witness. Uh, it says... Conviction can be based on the dying declaration after it passes the scrutiny of the court. To convict someone, just the victim's dying declaration by itself is enough. Why are you out to uh, prove that this wasn't rape? And why are you so sure this wasn't rape when I don't know whether this was rape or not, Mr. Malviya? Neither do you. 
but I am hearing from the victim. India is hearing from the victim. She is speaking. People are listening to her dying declaration and somehow the Uttar Pradesh government and police seems to have made up its mind that we're bol rahi hai. Why? You know, Rahul, it's very unfortunate that you are playing this video in a loop. While I understand the frame of mind she must have been at the time when this video was recorded, mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that there are also several videos out there where immediately after the crime happened, she and her mother have been on record saying there was an attempt to strangulate. That statement was subsequently changed. There are videos of that as well. And then comes the final statement of the complaint that they made. And then this video, which you are presenting to your viewers as dying declaration comes. But the reality is that there are several videos before this one where both the mother and the victim have said that it was an attempt to strangulate her and there's no mention no, of but rape. But that, that or murder by itself Let wasn't ghastly finish, enough for Rahul, you? Rahul, let me Mr. finish, Mr. Malviya, that please. murder itself wasn't ghastly enough for you? Will you let me finish I will, I will. and not try and sensationalize this? I said when I started that it's unfortunate that a girl has lost its life. But what is even more unfortunate is the section of media, including your channel and your media group, are trying to sensationalize, swoop down on Hathras, and put out your version of the story. Your journalist asked the victim's brother about the first video, which you haven't shown on your program, where the mother says that the girl was tried uh, to be strangulated. You're not showing that. Sir, Maybe you this incident like happened on the 14th of comment. September. The mother is telling us that the police didn't even arrange an ambulance, that the girl was like out in the field. They said, you have to go and take her like No, but this is the reality, about, Mr. Malviya. If this is the manner in which your police force is behaving, video. you're asking us to believe your police force. No, Mr. I'm Malviya, not, I'm asking you we to must be truth to power. We must be on the side of the victim. The truth must come out. The government the cannot the get away by trying to browbeat and intimidate the victim's family, by trying to treat the victim's family like they are terrorists, like they are on trial, like they have committed some happening. murder. If your journalists and media houses like yourselves stopped using this opportunity to peddle half-truths and untruths, we will perhaps have this case solved at the earliest. But if vested interests like yourself and journalists like your reporter tutor the victim's Sir, brother, so what did problem. she say? Can if I just play out Tanushri again? Because this is not, video, the, she's, she's being persistent, earlier, she's being dogged. When She's telling the victim's brother, send me a video. Me send me, to be gospel, send me the problem. video of what you, whatever you've said. I want to listen to what you're saying. And that is not wrong. And she wouldn't have had to do this, Mr. Malvia, if your police force had allowed journalists to go in and do the interview themselves. Why is our reporter having to find a way of getting a video out? Because your police force would not when allow for journalists to go in and do their job. Your business tutoring the victim's brother on what he should say and Sir, what he shouldn't. That video, that, that audio is out. I think let people decide she for themselves. On a story she is telling the, she's the, the she is telling the victim's herself. brother, send me your video. Say whatever no, you want. Say what you said. Send me the video. the video. In any case, why is the victims? The why is the victims' family under surveillance? Why have their shame. phones being snatched that away? Why are journalists' phones being tapped, Mr. Malvia? Why are journalists' phones being tapped? Why is the victim under surveillance? Like victim's said, family under surveillance? Why is the victim's family era, being treated like they're the accused, like they're the ones who went out and committed and murder? Are we, are we a functioning democracy? Are we a banana republic? Are we a functioning democracy, Mr. Malviya, or are we a banana republic?